music, science, it's the Amoeba People Podcast. Greetings and welcome to the Amoeba People Podcast, the show where science and music collide. Collide's a bit extreme. You know, it's really more like science is the crafty wide receiver and music is the quarterback. And at the snap, science jukes the defenders and gets wide open in the end zone. And music threads this perfect pass through the opposing team right into the waiting hands of science for a touchdown. And then music runs up to the end zone and science and music jump up, bump chests in the air, and then do a brief celebratory dance from the whiz. My name is Ray Hedgepeth, the singer guitarist of the unflinching nerdy science rock band, The Amoeba People. And on today's show, we're all going to get schooled. Paleo-schooled, that is. If you're wondering what that means, don't worry. Just come along for the ride because it's going to be a blast. My guest on today's show is paleontologist Lucy Herrero. Lucy works at the Raymond Alf Museum of Paleontology in Claremont, California. And the unique thing about Lucy is that she came up through the Webb schools as a student. The Raymond Alf Museum is on the campus of the Webb schools. And uh, she grew up basically working alongside paleontologists and eventually became one herself. So I wanted to do an entire episode all about the experience of hanging out with paleontologists at the ALF Museum, like I was able to do, uh, but also the experience of going to school and working alongside paleontologists and then becoming a paleontologist. So this is all about the the, the paleo education that uh, is offered through the web schools uh, where the Raymond Alf Museum is located. And even the song for today's episode is about my experience meeting and hanging out with and chowing down with paleontologists from the Raymond Alf Museum right there at the web schools. Uh, we went and had lunch together and that made it into the song. Um, so far on this first season of our podcast, we've been featuring songs from our latest album, The Fossil Record. But today's song is special. It was inspired by my visits to the Raymond Alf Museum and was actually written as I was leaving the museum after one of these visits. I, I was driving home and the idea came and I was like, wow, I, I want to write about this experience, this ultra cool experience. So that song uh, was written mostly in the car. And then I put some finishing touches on it when I got home. And it's only right now going to be available on this podcast episode. It's an unreleased tune. And I'm just going to keep building suspense. I'm not going to tell you any more about it, but um, you can't find it anywhere else, at least not yet. Um, so this entire episode really is all about getting paleo schooled. Um, I interviewed Lucy Herrero in one of the classrooms at the ALF Museum. So speaking of getting schooled, and the song is all about getting to eat lunch with a table of paleontologists and the fascinating topics that arise when they let you break bread with them. So let's get started, huh? And one quick word before we do get paleo schooled. Um, thank you. That's that's the quick word. And um, to those of you who have rated and listened to our podcast on all the different platforms, um, uh, thank you. And to those of you in countries all over the world, the new ones that are popping up, welcome to uh, to the Amoeba People podcast. We thank you for listening. Uh, it's been really exciting to see uh, that it. We kind of have a, not a massive audience, but we have a worldwide audience, which is so cool. So thank you for tuning in and uh, and for enjoying what we do. Um, and I just got a little bit of news I need to share with you guys. Um, I mentioned in a previous episode that in 2020, this year, we're going to be doing a live taping of a podcast. And that is most likely, we now have a month, I believe, and a possible location. We will update you as uh, things change, but it will most likely be in April for the City of STEM Science Fair festival and it will be in conjunction with Professor Dave, who I've already talked about before, who has amazing YouTube videos that educate you on not only science, but a ton of different topics. Uh, he has his own podcast, and we're going to have our, our, our show called Podcast Wars. That's what we're tentatively calling it in April. And it will most likely be at LA Los Angeles Ale Works, which is right next to SpaceX. We, uh, we don't have our guest nailed down yet. That sounds a little weird, um, but we have a few options that we're working on. We're trying to see whose schedules will work out, and we're, we're getting all the details worked out. But anyway, uh, if you want to come out to that live event, um, we will have hopefully by the next podcast, a more firm update um, on on all of the things that I just mentioned and be looking at our social media because 
that'll tell you all the details once they're available. And the next thing is, is that we, this is the big news, we are developing this podcast into a radio show. There is a brand new public radio station here in Long Beach, California, and I'd been waiting to say something about it because I wanted to make sure that it was really going to happen, but um, we are adapting this show, the Amoeba People podcast, into the Amoeba People radio hour. How cool is that? So um, it is going to be the radio hour where science and music collide. The people at Long Beach Public Radio um, that we met at a producer's meeting are fantastic. Um, It is in its beginning stages, but the people who are putting it together, they have been working on this for years, um, going through all the proper channels and uh, starting a nonprofit and all this, uh, getting everything done the right way so that they can produce a quality public radio station for the Long Beach area, which is a huge area. And of course, all of this stuff will be online too. It'll be real easy to get to online. So the Amoeba People podcast will become the Amoeba People Radio Hour. And yes, we will be able to podcast episodes of our radio show. So you're not going to miss out on anything if you're like, I don't want to listen to your radio show. (laughs) That's totally fine because we'll podcast those episodes as well. Although it will be slightly different. Uh, Our first season is going to be mostly the the topics that we covered in the first season of this podcast and and a lot of the same interviews. Um, But there's going to be some surprises. And um, one of the big ones is our audio cartoon. And we'll be talking about that and a lot more in our next podcast episode um, to kind of give you a preview of the transition that we're going to be making as we start producing this uh, this radio show for Long Beach Public Radio, the Amoeba People Radio Hour. All right, that's enough of the exciting updates. Let's get into the song. So the song you're going to hear today, as I mentioned already, is an unreleased tune. It's brand new, and you're only going to hear it on this podcast episode. I mean, you know, eventually we'll probably release it in some form or another. We'll probably re-record it and everything. But right now, this is the only place you can get this song. And so, um, and and it was inspired by these visits that I had made to the Raymond Alf Museum. I had visited on two separate occasions, uh, the first time to interview Gabe Santos and Jared Hoyt. And you can hear those episodes, previous episodes of the Amoeba People podcast. Those are terrific ones. And then I returned a short while later to interview Billy Guerrero and Lucy Herrero, who is our guest today. Uh, Billy's episode, of course, you can hear um, uh, in couple episodes back. Um, I'm really good with memorizing the numbers of the episodes, as you can tell. Um, but that one's a really fantastic episode too. And and then after Lucy's interview, I was like, I was going to have her interview, or not interview, uh, introduce the song, a song from the Fossil Record. And I decided at the last second that I was already working on a new song that was inspired by these visits to the Raymond Alf Museum. So I said, uh, can you please say that you're going to introduce... Um, Parasaurola, 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 Parasaurola. Now you're going to notice that I have like a lot of people tell me, Hey Ray, you're a pretty smart guy, but there are certain dinosaur names where I sound like, I don't know anything. <laughs> like I sound like a complete moron. And this is one of those names. And I think it's why I wanted to write a song about it because you notice what I'm trying to say. It. I'm Parasaurola, That's it. Uh, Cause I keep wanting to say Parasaurolophus. And, you know, I was just recently on the Jurassic Park ride at Universal Studios. Um, uh, we, over Christmas, we were there at the one in Florida, you know, um, which is kind of crazy over Christmas, by the way. I don't really recommend it. But um, on the Jurassic Park ride, um, they're like, now we're entering the hadrosaur paddock. One specific hadrosaur is the Parasaurolophus. And I was like, they said it the right way, as if they wouldn't, because I always got it wrong. Um so anyway, uh, long story short, I'm still in my head trying to think, am I saying it right? Like, and, uh, you know, those uh, friends of mine at the Raymond Alf Museum will be listening to this, and uh, you can judge me harshly, uh, and, uh, and, and please do not hesitate to uh, poke copious amounts of fun at me the next time uh, we cross paths. Um, but anyway, that was kind of the backstory. I wanted it to be about um, the Parasaurolophus. 
oh my gosh, it's happening again. That dinosaur, that hadrosaur <laughs> um, that was sitting on the table as I was interviewing Billy and uh, when I interviewed uh, Lucy as well. And, uh, and also about the lunches that I got to have with them. These were the coolest things. Okay, so we would go, or like I'd do an interview in the morning and then, um, and then Gabe would be like, hey everybody, let's go to lunch. And like you go to lunch at the web schools, like to their cafeteria that looks like Hogwarts Castle, like, you know, the Great Hall in Hogwarts. Um, and no, I'm not kidding. Like, and you go there and you're there with all these students, uh, who are, who are well in school and, um, and who also work in highly specialized, uh, disciplines, even though they're, you know, I think middle school and high school, high school predominantly. And, um, and man, it was just so cool. And so I'm sitting with the paleontologists at their table and I was like, there's a song here. There's just a song waiting to be born. And so that's where the idea came from. As soon as I finished the interview with Lucy and I, I hopped in my car. Yes. Before I started driving. So don't worry. I set up the voice, uh, record on my phone, on my iPhone so that I could, uh, get these ideas down. So it was just me driving for, you know, 20 minutes or so. Um, I'm only going to play you a minute or two of that first idea. And because of course I'm mispronouncing the dinosaur's name. Um, so, and, the, and you're going to hear the dorky musical ideas and then me talking to myself. It's, it's embarrassing and that's why I'm sharing it. So uh, this is really the only demo of the song. Everything else was me just kind of taking that idea and then recording it uh, for us to play in this episode. So here we go. Me driving back from the Raymond Alf museum. Okay, it's got that weird garbled sound. <laughs> because uh, it's it's garbled just because I'm uh, I'm I've got it plugged into the speakers of the car, so it creates that weird kind of garbled tone. Vegan meatball sandwich. <laughs> vegan meatball sandwich. <laughs> yeah, the vegan meatball sandwiches. I'll explain that in a minute. And that stayed in the song, by the way. The vegan meatball sandwiches. B minor, B minor, E, E, E. Me just trying to remind. Yeah, I'm trying to remind myself of the chords here, so that I, the chords I'm hearing in my head. Okay, that's a descending line that did not stay in the song. What am I even doing? I'm singing. I don't even know what I'm doing. Oh gosh! Driving on the freeway, lots of traffic, trying to write a song about Parallelopsaurus. Oh god, that's not the name. Parallelopsaurus in the chorus. That's not the name. Parallelopsaurus. I got the name wrong. Trying sitting in traffic, trying to write a song about para. Wow. My apologies, paleontologists, especially those of you at the Raymond Alf Museum who tried patiently, <laughs> patiently to get me to pronounce it right. I'd like to say, hey, but I gotta see you later. I got a fossil in Unchaqueta. Got a fossil sitting in a in a Unchaqueta. My Espanol. Got a fossil in a Unchaqueta. Yeah, you know, like a jacket. That's I guess that's the jacket, Spanish for uh huh. Is what it comes in a jaqueta. Thanks for explaining that. For jacket. Right, right. Okay. It's weird talking to myself like this. Parasaurolophus. Just gotta get the name right. Parasaurolophus. Yeah, but you still have it wrong. Waiting in a jacket to be free. <laughs> this is frustrating knowing that I'm getting things wrong and I'm arguing with myself. Kind of interesting though. Okay, one thing I got right is the beat, maybe. Oh, what is that? I really don't know what I'm doing at all at this point. Oh, I'm trying to come up with a little melody part there. Little interlude of music right, <laughs> yeah that is enough i completely agree but you know what hey on this podcast we let you see the process warts and all and boy was that ever warty um okay so let me let me talk about the vegan meatball sandwiches um i, I don't know why it's a thing but it's a thing or at least it was um, when I was there and got to have lunch with the paleontologists, which, you know, this, this group of these, these young paleontologists so interested in their work and so intelligent and, um, 
you know, hard for me not to feel a little bit like an imposter. You know, I'm, I'm basically, uh, you know, uh, I'm just kind of, you know, slipping my way in via this podcast uh, uh, to be able to hang out with these guys. But they were super down to earth. And, uh, you know, uh, the cool thing about smart people uh, that I tend to have in common with is nerd culture. So, um, so being able to connect uh, via nerd culture is always good, whether that's music or movies or, or what have you. So, um, so they made me feel comfortable. And then of course, you know, just they're like, here, try this, try that. Like, and then you've got the, that there's a line about compost that comes up in the song. Um, there's a line about, you know, putting the trash where it needs to go. And of course the vegan meatball sandwiches. And then there's that, um, Parasaurolophus. Hopefully I said that right that time. Um, in the, the white jacket, um, and, uh, and a line I, I came up with, uh, I got to bust that hadrosaur out of its white plaster jacket. These plaster jackets that they, um, pack these fossils in are really cool. You know, and it's like kind of this, this, you know, staple of paleontology, these jackets. So that made it into the song as well. So, um, I said earlier that, um, this is the only, that was the only demo of the song, but I completely forgot. I do have this little acoustic demo that I'm going to play just a portion for you so you can get a little sense of uh, the way the song had developed um, from the car uh, to, to the house. So uh, here's a little bit of that. Well, I was sitting outside eating lunch in the sun at the paleontologist's table. Vegan meatball sandwiches and conversation about specimens that needed to be labeled. When all of a sudden somebody jumped up, I thought something had really gone wrong. But no one at the table acted too alone They just nodded as she sang this song I got a Parasaurolophus sitting in my office Notice how I'm pronouncing it wrong you gotta Shameless, it's really shameless just tasty, but I gotta see you later It's time to make some racket Gotta bust that hadrosaur out of its white plaster jacket Okay, well, well, we'll pause it right there uh, with me turning the page in the notebook. Um, but you can see, uh, at least there's a song taking shape. Uh, I may not have the, oh, I don't know, main character of the song pronounced correctly. Uh, minor details, right? But anyway, um, I, I am sincerely hoping that um, the finished product you will hear that I have not disappointed you uh, dinosaur enthusiasts and paleontologists out there, or even the creators of the Jurassic park ride so anyway uh that's that's all we're gonna do for now we're gonna um just uh, play the completed version at the uh, end of the episode and that's gonna give us the opportunity right now to jump right in with both feet to my interview with lucy herrero paleontologist at the raymond alf museum who came up through the web school system working alongside paleontologists and becoming a paleontologist herself let's get paleo schooled so my first question for lucy was how does one find oneself in a place where they're like yeah i want to study paleontology as a 15 or 16 year old i mean what are the steps that lead to something like that how how do students wind up do they, are, do they just kind of go to the school and then decide eh, maybe i'm interested maybe i'm not i mean i i really was totally unfamiliar with this concept of basically training kids uh in the sciences from such a young age and such a great idea um from the outside but i wanted to know how she ended up in this place this is kind of a funny story that my mom likes to tell and I've grown up in the Claremont area since I was very young and uh, part of that when I was you know maybe two three four I would go to mommy me with my mom and then eventually my sister when she was born and so a lot of that involved uh, going to trips to local you know parks museums throughout LA County and we would often come to the ALF Museum I don't remember it, but my mom says there was one time we were here and I just like stood in the doorway and was like, this is my museum. <laughs> and and I was the kid that was always checking out like the dinosaur books, the rocks and mineral books from the library. Like if you looked at the library card, you'd see my name like for months on end. We <laughs> were checking out the same books over and over again. Uh, and that was a huge childhood interest of mine. But, you know, going through elementary, middle school, I 
kind of disconnected and it wasn't really something that I, um, you know, had pers- it had intended to pursue or was really, um, you know, part of my consciousness when mm-hmm. I decided to apply to the web schools. Basically, I had, um, you know, a really great opportunity to, uh, you know, take advantage of the education here. I knew that I didn't really want to just stay in the public school system. And so um, when I decided to apply to Webb, I knew I wanted to come here because of the opportunities, but not necessarily because of the museum. Mm -hmm. Um, That was just kind of like an added bonus at the time. And uh, once I was accepted and, you know, started taking classes, the museum was something that I knew about, but wasn't super engaged with at the onset. Um, all of the ninth grade students at Webb uh, are required to go on a ninth grade fossil collecting trip called mm-hmm. a peccary trip. And when I went, I really did not like it at all. Mm-hmm. Like it was hot. We were in um, Barstow collecting Miocene fossils, so mm-hmm. about 15 million years old. And we were walking, and I didn't know where we were going. And I was like, <laughs> this is not for me. Um, and so, kind of from there, I just you know, went al- went along with my, um, you know, normal high school life my freshman year. And then uh, spring break rolled around and they offered a spring break fossil collecting trip to different location, uh, the Goler Formation, which is outside of Ridgecrest, California. Uh, and that is similarly like a dry desert arid environment but the fauna there is much older it's about 60 million years old and it represents actually some of california's earliest fossil mammals Mm. um so it's a hugely important research site but i wasn't really into that one too (laughs) i was some of my friends i think Actually, I don't think any of my friends were going. I just like kind of signed up and some of the other classmates that I had signed up, but there were more of the juniors and seniors who had went. So I was like, oh, I'll just hang out, see what this is about. And then uh, it, it was all right, but, you know, went back to my normal high school activities. And then that summer, I was really excited because there was going to be a trip to Spain. And mm-hmm. I was like so into that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I applied, I was accepted, but unfortunately just... Uh, from how it worked out, I wasn't able to go. Uh, and so my mom was like, well, why don't you go on the summer peccary trip? <laughs> I was like, well, I didn't like the first two that much, but that sounds better than being at home for the entire summer. So <laughs> I went to that, and that was uh, about two and a half weeks to Utah and Montana, and that's where I fell in love. Like, oh, okay. that was like, this was it. Maybe it was like the dinosaurs uh-huh. versus the mammals. I wasn't really into the, <laughs> the mammal collecting. Uh-huh. wasn't into the, like the California Mojave Desert right. collecting. But uh, on that trip, that's where I was like, wow, this is amazing. I'm seeing all these new things, like experiencing all these different places, like really challenging myself mentally and physically in a way that I hadn't been before. I liked the outdoors, but it was not really our like family practice or something um, that we did to go like on seven to eight mile hikes daily, um, you know, experiencing like the monsoons rolling in and, and really like roughing it, mm-hmm. like um, not having any sort of outside connection um, to the world. Mm-hmm. And I just, thrived I loved it and so from that experience I came back to web and I changed my whole schedule like I want to take all the paleontology classes Uh that I can I started taking uh, the honors intro to paleontology class with Dr. Farkey who um, was a new faculty member that year Um, and so really it's been interesting to see how Dr. Farkey started at web and and how he has sort of shaped my professional trajectory as I've also you know seen him grow professionally in uh, teaching in a secondary school context but as well so from there I took the honors paleo class and then went on to do research at Webb and at that point I was really involved in all aspects of the museum from you know giving tours uh, volunteering on weekends working in the fossil preparation lab after school um, doing my own research uh, as part of the academic curriculum and so really it it's a very unique opportunity for students to be able to come in and actually participate in so many different aspects of the field at a young age 
Um, and not only that, the, the fossil collecting as well. Um, so I felt very privileged and very lucky to be able um, to do that mm -hmm. because I know there's so many people that haven't had that chance. Right, yeah. One of the things I like so much about the way this story unfolds is the fact that it was not a single aha moment because a lot of times we assume that's how it's going to be for people. But in reality, it's usually a slow, gradual process of trying this out, trying that out, and having a school system in place that allows that to unfold is incredibly beneficial. So that's one of the things that really stood out to me as as a truly fantastic method for allowing people to explore a variety of things before they come to that thing that really sparks that joy in them. And just a quick little side note, if you hear that little hum in there, that's just simply the air conditioning system in the room I was interviewing her in uh, turning kind of off and on. So you're going to hear a hum every now and then. It's not a truck that is interminably circling the facility. It's just the, uh, the air system. Um, uh, after that, she told this great uh, story about the, uh, the, 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 rock star paleontologist Jack Horner, uh, who, if you're not aware, he's the guy that Dr. Alan Grant, the character played by Sam Neill in Jurassic Park, or the Jurassic Park movies, the original ones, um, uh, Jack Horner is uh, at least one of the paleontologists that Dr. Grant's character is based on. From there, you know, a lot of my research was based on specimens that I actually helped collect or helped prepare myself. Um, I was able to go on to present at uh, different paleontological conferences and it's a very unique experience being there as a high school student. Mm -hmm. Most people will automatically assume that you're an undergrad or even a grad student. Like, right. no, I, I'm like 16 and mm -hmm. this is the project I've been working on. But there was definitely like a moment where um, I had just finished up uh, one of my main papers um, describing the changes in uh, skull shape in hadrosaurs, which are duckbill dinosaurs, from uh, youth to adulthood. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I had my poster, I was at SVP, which is like um, the top paleontological conference, it's Society of Vertebrate Paleontology, and I, I was prepared, I was standing my by my poster and this old guy in sort of like a brown suit walks by and he's asking me some questions and I'm like yeah well we looked at this we looked at that here are my results and he's like oh yeah great job I agree with you he kind of walks on and then Dr. Farkey comes up and he's like that was Jack Horner I was like I had no idea but had I known that it was Jack Horner I think I would have responded to him much right. differently but so it's good that you had yeah, a natural response because yeah, you didn't know yeah. yeah it was it was very I was well prepared and so it yeah. was easy to navigate in those contexts. Mm -hmm. I think because of obviously the uh, experience that I had, mm -hmm. you know, being hands on with that specimen mm -hmm. for hundreds of hours, yeah. hundreds of hours, and then having Dr. Farkey and uh, Dr. Laughrin's guidance and, you know, it's it was really, every single you know, experience has been just phenomenal for me. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, one of the things of starting as a high school freshman and seeing a brief glimpse of what was before Dr. Farkey and what was after, what Dr. Farkey was able to do is just step into this role as curator and really just have someone dedicated at the museum towards research. Doc, mm -hmm. Um, the director of the museum, he is absolutely incredible and his vision for the museum, where it was when he started, where it was when I started and where it is now, it's an incredible trajectory. But what basically Dr. Farkey has allowed doc, um, more people to focus on the research aspect and sort of, um, I guess, free up uh, some of the responsibilities so that uh, we can not only be a world-class museum in terms of our collections and in terms of our exhibits, but also just the amount of uh, research and data that we're putting out there. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's We operate in a different function than, for example, uh, American Natural History Museum or LA County Natural History Museum, because most of the knowledge that's generated is generated by students. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're in this room and all of these papers that are like, a, up on the wall, they're all student publications that either 
our wow. our students as first authors or students as co-authors on papers that Dr. Lofgren and Dr. Farkey have published. And so well, really I'm try to put a picture of this up yeah. on the uh, up on our website so people can see like the the wall um, is covered with these framed papers all that uh, students have contributed to. Right? I think yeah, Dr. Uh, Farkey, you know, as specifically a research scientist really allowed the ALF Museum to take it up a notch and just in terms of the number of projects we were able to cover, the number of research papers and conferences Mm -hmm. we were able to attend. And because he is a dinosaur paleontologist, Doc is a mammal paleontologist, so we obviously had a collection. Mm -hmm. So when you hear Lucy talking about Doc, I just want to clarify here, she's referring to Dr. Don Lofgren, the director of the museum, who um, is an expert in mammal uh, paleontology. And uh, then there's Dr. Farkey, Andrew Farkey, who, uh, is, uh, whose expertise is in dinosaur fossils. So mammal fossils, dinosaur fossils. Um, I hope I'm getting this all right. I'm pretty sure I am. Um, uh, but, but what I love is just that, that kind of, there's a real collaborative vibe in the way that they refer to uh, basically their bosses. And, uh, and that's what I loved about it is like, you know, you know, it's, uh, there, there's certainly respect uh, for the knowledge that they possess, but then there's also this sense of um, okay, there's mad respect, but then it's also like, but these are also uh, colleagues, and they're they're working in conjunction to to get this incredible work done. So, just wanted to clarify, uh, if you, in case you hear her refer to Doc or Dr. Farkey, those are two different people, Dr. Lofgren and Dr. Farkey. And, and so, for for me, it's it's balancing some of these you know, different methodologies, like Dr. Lofgren, he is so meticulous. Uh-huh. And so that's Doc. Yeah, Doc. That's called Doc. Uh-huh. Okay. And, and, you know, having studied and learned under him, like I know like a lot of the ways I approach, you know, my, my own research or even, you know, other parts of life, like mm-hmm. things are very organized, compartmentalized. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and I, I appreciate that. And so yeah, yeah. you take kind of different traits from, from different yeah. yeah yeah that's great so my next question was actually about her name because you know when you work in paleontology and your name is lucy i was curious like was your name you know inspired by the australopithecus uh, did your parents have that in mind um but she said uh, no not really i mean uh you know obviously her interest is in dinosaur fossils not uh, australopithecus Pithecines, if that's the correct word. Uh, you know, uh, hominids are, of course, interesting. And, of course, I'm sure there were some references to it uh, uh, as she was uh, going through school, no question. Uh, but she also mentioned uh, she encountered lots of references to Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds by the Beatles. But really, it was just a family name. And that's the only story behind it. So, satisfied with that answer, of course. Uh, I move on to the next question, which I really wanted to know about the process of being a student student like in the field like here you are like are you do you go into like major teenage mode and be like oh my gosh i need my phone like what is that really like when you're a high schooler and you're on a dig yeah and so i think one of one of the amazing things about the the way the summer program functions is uh you know we head out to these field sites in utah and montana but uh the faculty do a really great job of taking us around to, you know, natural and historical sites that are adjacent to those places. Mm-hmm. So when we were excavating in the Kapirwitz Formation, um, we would go to Bryce and Zion and, and you know, all, all of those um, places as well. And so for me, it was, you know, a chance to, you know, see the world and, and experience a lot of different, you know, natural or historical um, monuments that you know, f- just from my own background, I I hadn't had the opportunity to do so, and so, obviously, you're spending a lot of time with your fellow classmates and peers. We would load up these like really old Ford uh, web vans and like <laughs> drive them, and like the the uh, um, like, air conditioner like pieces would be like falling out and hitting us and like (laughs) seatbelt straps are like you know not 100 percent working all the time and (laughs) basically it's just like a bunch of kids like jumping in these vans drive driven from place to place like 
pe- we're eating like junk food in the back <laughs> and so it's like the the closest thing to freedom that you can you can experience as like a 14 to 15 year old and right. so i i loved it and you know it, not not only going to these places but going to different museums and going to different collections behind the scenes meeting you know other professional paleontologists who already have established careers in these fields when when you're a young student and you're making these connections and then you later go on to see these people at conferences obviously you're building networks you're building relationships and that's hugely mm-hmm. important uh, for anyone who wants to be in the field right. um, and so yeah I mean it's I think it's very holistic like uh-huh. the way it's structured out like you're you're going to meet the right relationships and um, and network with the right people and then also have this like really awesome experience of freedom and you're not with your parents anymore so you can just do whatever you want no no it's like and then also like i think for me um just on an individual level having the chance to you know be in nature to sort of disconnect from um you know society or technology and sleep in a tent for three weeks like that is really important to me and that was uh, a huge part of why i was so drawn to that sort of yeah. program that sort of framework wow how neat do you um how often do you go out on expeditions nowadays um so generally uh, we do a field season that's about two to three weeks um in the summer mm-hmm. uh, and then usually we'll go back once more to sort of um pick up pick up our supplies uh, this site that I've mentioned, the Kapirwitz Formation in the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument in Utah. We just pretty much finished, wrapped up all of our excavations there. We had been excavating there since I think the mid 2000s. Mm-hmm. So it's it's been over a decade of excavation. Um, and so pretty much every summer we, we would spend, like I said, two to three weeks at that field site. And then um, since it's so remote, we'd actually use a helicopter to fly in our supplies. And mm-hmm. then at the end of the summer, use a helicopter to fly out the supplies um, that we had left behind and any large jackets of, of fossils. And so- uh, yes, the large jackets of fossils, which of course made it into the song as well. These plaster jackets are so, I don't know what it is, mesmerizing, I would say. Um, they, you know, basically what they do is they, they, you know, I say they paleontologists, you know, in these dig sites, as you know, Lucy is describing, you know, these teenage kids, you know, helping out, uh, paleontologists, you know, working alongside going out for two to three weeks, eating junk food, uh, riding in, you know, trucks of variable seatbelt <laughs> safety. And, um, and then, um, when the fossils are found there, uh, there's this plaster that is essentially poured around them. And, and jacketed around these uh, specimens so that they stay safe. And then when they ship them back, they're basically kind of cocooned in these things. And then their job back at the museum is to take them out of the jackets and uh, basically make them museum ready. Uh, I make, I'm making it sound way simpler than it really is. It's a very long, detailed, and meticulous process. But uh, that plaster jacket bit made it into the song, as you will hear. And so um, since Lucy uh, has it's kind of brought us up to this point. I'd like to thank Lucy for taking the time to talk with me and tell us all about her experience as a student and how that led her into paleontology. And so um, I asked her, I said, hey, thanks for uh, for doing all this. And would you introduce a song that I had not written yet? <laughs> and so, and, and a song also, let's not forget, that um, whose title I still couldn't pronounce at this point. So uh, Lucy was very patient with me. You heard me butchering the name and botching the name Parasaurolophus uh, earlier in this episode. And I'm still not even sure if I'm saying it right. I hope I am. Um, but she was patient with me. We shared a good laugh about that. And of course, then she was awesome enough to introduce this exclusive track. So thank you, Lucy Herrero, and everybody at the ALF Museum for being so awesome and incredible. And here, one last time, is Lucy. Hi, I'm paleontologist Lucy Herrero, and I'm pleased to introduce this exclusive track, Paracerolophus by the Amoeba People. Mm-hmm. 
Well, I was sitting outside eating lunch in the sun at the paleontologist table. Vegan meatball sandwiches and conversation about specimens that needed to be labeled. When all of a sudden somebody jumped up, I thought something had really gone wrong. But no one at the table seemed too alarmed. They just nodded as she sang this song. I got a parasaurolophus sitting in my office, waiting in a plaster jacket. You gotta understand this, we can eat more sandwiches, tasty, but I gotta make some racket. I said it's time to make some racket. I gotta bust that hadrosaur out of its white plaster jacket. Soon everybody at the paleo table stood up and grabbed their plates and napkins. They put the compost in the bin, put the trash in the can, and that's when everybody started clapping. And all through the hills and the streets and the canyons you could hear their voices echoing loudly. They shuffled back to work with their hands waving high, you could hear those paleos singing proudly. I got a parasol elephant sitting in my office, waking in a plaster jacket. You gotta understand this We can eat my sandwiches tasty But I gotta make some racket I said it's time to make some racket I gotta bust that hadrosaur Out of its white plastic jacket Singing Hey, oh, let's play Oh, here we go Hey, oh, let's play Oh, here we go Well, there it is, Raymond Alf Museum. Uh, that's our thank you to you guys. Um, from my experience hanging out with you all uh, and having some vegan meatball sandwiches. So thank you to the Raymond Alf Museum for being so cool and so open to uh, the Amoeba people putting you guys on our podcast for a number of episodes. I hope uh, the song does you guys a little bit of justice. And um, and thanks to Lucy Herrero, our guest today, for, uh, for being such an awesome paleontologist and for sharing her story of coming up through the web school system and now working at the Raymond Alf. Uh, thanks to all of you guys out there. Um, again, please give us a rating and a review if you can and spread the word. If you want to contribute to our podcast financially, of course, we have a Patreon page, but really the best way that you can spread the word is just letting all your friends know about it. We will be keeping you posted on all of our awesome live events coming up in 2020. Uh, we've got a big year planned and a lot of cool fun stuff for as far as our live events are concerned and of course don't forget uh, the radio show that i mentioned that we are starting this uh, year with long beach public radio as i mentioned before though don't worry the shows will be podcasted so you can find everything that you need here right on this rss feed so until next time everybody i hope you're having a great time uh hey ho let's pay leo right on onward <laughs> <laughs>